um, it's always hard for me to hit the go live button. Um, wait, I guess a little bit until I see a couple people here. I don't even know if this thing is going. It's hard to tell. Um, I'll wait a minute. <sighs> Okay, we got somebody. All right, cool. Hi, somebody. <laughs> um, hmm, let me first just gather my thoughts because it's a lot. So um, there are, you know, I, I'm trying to walk you guys through this as it is found and discovered. Um, I understand that, you know, there's some things that I don't understand in complexity, but there are also some things that I do uh, up until this point. Now, let me remind you guys of something. Um, if you don't remember... Um, like over a year ago and when I was in Flint I ventured into uh, an abandoned house and in that abandoned house I found all kinds of documents and one of them was um, well a lot of them were these newspaper articles hi everybody thank you so much for listening to this I ask that you all share this out um, it's really important um, there are some newspaper articles and I remember I said when I found this stuff it seemed like somebody wanted it to be found Either it was they wanted it to be found or they were hiding it. And um, these newspaper articles that I found were laminated and they tell a story. Um, so one of them that I found, this is actually the very first thing that I ever found in that abandoned house in Flint, Michigan in March March of 2016, um, were newspaper articles like this. And they're laminated, okay? So I'm going to touch on this, okay? Um, and basically what this is, this is a newspaper article from April 2nd, 1995. Something about April, month of April has stuck out to me. Thank you guys that have shared this video. Um, has stuck out to me in Flint. April is really weird. Um, and this says, um, neighborhood claims environmental discrimination. And unfortunately it, it says it's, please see, EPA A12, and I don't have that page, but I'll read to you a little bit of what I do have. I'm going to work off of this. Um, above Lillian Robinson, a bunch of powerful people meet behind closed doors, and the next thing you know, they're sold, they sold you out. Um, and that's this picture, right? Students leave Carpenter Road Elementary School as construction con continues on Genesee Power Plan. Below, what I do have, it says, when the wind blows just right, Lillian Robinson says she can taste fumes from a nearby asphalt plant. Black, oily smoke from a North Dort Highway junkyard burns her nose and throat. And for years, Robinson watched dump trucks parade past her tiny house on West Boulevard Drive, south of East Carpenter Road, just bringing garbage to a flint dump, then yard waste to a now-closed city compost site. So... When developers proposed building a wood-burning power station in Genesee Township just across Carpenter Road from the North Flint neighborhood, residents said, enough is enough. We've got to fight everything. It's a terrible situation, said Robinson, 67. The only dump on people, they only dump on people who can least afford to defend themselves. But this time, Robinson, president of Flint, Genesee United for Action and Environmental Safety, and other opponents of the Genesee Power Station are using a new, potentially lethal weapon in their fight, a charge of environmental racism. And this is from April 2nd, 1995. I know it's backwards, okay? This is documents that I found in that house abandoned in Flint, Michigan. It's all starting to come together. This is not by chance that I walked in on this stuff, right? There's more that I would like to read you about General Motors selling, um, selling their plants to um, Germans that were involved with the, like, the tanks for the Nazis. So, once again, I'm going to read because um, it's a lot. Okay, so I will share an article here after this is done. April 6, 2014, M Live um, wrote an article, and it was about this cold water um, dumping site. And one of the things that I read in that that really stuck out to me, it says that after the state spent a dozen years trying to force Flint officials to clean up an unlicensed dump on Bray Road, the city is making a last-minute scramble to get that work done. All right, so I'm going to read off of these notes and I'm going to elaborate as I continue on because you guys really need to understand that this is telling a story and these puzzle pieces are being put together as to who, why, when, um, and why really is a huge one. Why and who and those that are going unpunished, they have their hands in this. Um, so, all right, let me just take a deep breath here and just gather because there's so many, I have like four pages of notes here. Um, so, uh, one of the comments made by Jim 
Ardvin. It is something that the city has needed to take care of. Jim is a senior geologist in the DEQ, the MDEQ's Office of Waste Management and Radiological Protection. It's been on our radar for a long time, at least 10 years. At least 10 years I knew about this. And I'd like to show you guys exactly what it is that I'm going to be referring to. Is um, If you guys, any of you guys had watched that last... Um, that la the video that I did when I was showing you guys um, on Google Earth, some of the things that I had found, big question marks as to what are they. Well, if you notice, um, this is off of cold water here. Okay, this this white, this little white thing right here. Uh, um, it's not wanting to. This is called the, well, anyways, you can't really see it that well, but it's called the Cornwell Drain. The Cornwell Drain, right? And there's actually another one. Um, there's another thing that's got a lot of white sediments in there. And then do you guys remember also that house that I showed you about that had um, some really weird stuff in the back, in the backyard? Thank you guys for sharing this because this is important stuff. Those of you guys who are actually walking through this step by step with us, trying to piece this puzzle together, um, trying our best to help you out and help the residents of Flint out mostly because this is absolute racism. This is absolutely, um, you know, a class war, a race war. This is, um, like she said, what's her name? Lillian Robinson in 1995. She said, this is, this is racism. This is racism. Um, and it's, it's class war as well. So that house that I was showing you guys on, on Bray Road, um, where they had those two lakes in the backyard where I showed you and I said, you know, something about those, those little ponds there, you know, when I look at those ponds, everything, when I pan and zoom in on them, um, those are the only ponds that seem to have like shapes inside of them. Everything else, all other bodies of water were pretty smooth and um, I didn't notice anything inside of them. And of course now I'm having a hard time finding it. So I just ask you guys to just be patient with me because this is really important. All right, this is massively important. Doggone, I really wish that I could find this for you guys right now. But in the meantime, let me just continue to move on. Um, all right, so 10 years is a really long time for the MDEQ's oh. office to know about this um, about this site here. And the thing about this site, all right, so let's continue on. Let's continue on. And this is why this is really important, okay, because people in that city are sick and dying right now. They're sick and dying. And there's so much cover up. The switch of the water, the switch of the water was seriously just a planned, um, a planned, like vice that they use to get their way and it stems all the way back to Jeff Wright and the KWA because the city of Flint, Michigan had committed themselves to the, to the KWA pipeline way before the switch of the water. They had already invested millions of dollars into that KWA pipeline and so they're trying to cover their tracks and they had to do it a very pristine and precise way and um, they're so like darn out early you know he's been he's been facing felony charges and whether he's guilty or innocent whatever you know I, I, I probably that's a tough one, actually. I was just reading his statement today. Um, I'll get back to that maybe later. So the fact of the matter is, is that this was planned. This was absolutely planned. M. Live FOIA consent agreements and letters that were dating back to 1997. Um, and they said that in this Cornwell site, a lot of the reason why you see this white stuff is because um, it's likely to be concrete from other waste sites or construction sites in the area. Um, so the reason why they didn't go about cleaning that area up was, and, and if you know, this is toxic waste, by the way, this is toxic waste. Look at that. That's exposed. It's, it's open. It's exposed. It's not capped. People can, people are exposed to this. All right. And there's plenty of low income like this one right here. So you see this right here, this is toxic waste that is uncapped, exposed to the elements, to the air, to the water, to the streets, to the rain, you know, and then right over here, you have an apartment complex right next to it that is low income housing um, right next to this, this site right here. Okay, so if you guys ever want to look this up yourself, it's the Cornwell drain, it's off of Coldwater, and... Um, this was absolutely planned. I'm 
kind of having a hard time even giving you guys this message because I'm so angry about this. I can't believe that these people that are investigating this have overlooked this because to me, I think that they're all a part of it. Bill Schuette, too. He's overlooked so many things like Matt McFarland. Why was he, why was Matt, why was Matt McFarland murdered but not Mike Glasgow? Glasgow. I can never say his name. Mike was never murdered, but Matt McFarland was. Matt was getting ready to tell the truth and to testify in court and Matt lives or Matt dies and Mike lives. Um, they're trying to shut these people up that know stuff. Um, so basically the financial problems are the primary reason for um, the inaction of cleaning up the site is what they said. Corruption and greed, mishandling of the funds, it's all catching up to these people. This is what corruption and this is what greed looks like. It's eventually going to come up and it's going to bite you in the butt. So this is what we're seeing right now and the, the residents are the ones that are going to pay the price because these people have been exposed for so much longer. Um, than people even realize. There's so many people that live right around this stuff and they don't even realize it. The city of Flint, the residents don't even realize that this is going on. And the thing about this Cornwall site with this toxic waste that I just showed you, there's actually pipes that are leading to, so let's just take a little tour here. Here's the Cornwall, here's the Cornwall site right there, right? It's a little blurry. There it is. So here's the Flint River. If you just take the Flint River all the way down, eventually where it's going to take you to is um, the, the water plant. The water plant is right along that river where they are, there's pipes that, there's six miles of pipes that go from that drain all the way down to the Flint water um, plant. And if you guys ever go back to any of the other live videos I did and I showed you that, um, I showed you guys that at that water plant, there is these things that go underground and they're ventilated into the air. Is that where that toxic waste is going to? Um, because remember, they were first processing this toxic waste. Um, it was processed and filtered before they started to flush it through the main water source, right? But then they, they stopped doing that. They stopped doing that. So this, this corn water, this Cornwall site, this is... This is separate from that Racer Superfund site that I told you guys about when I was in Flint, Michigan at that trailer park and I showed you, I was telling you guys about how that Racer Superfund site, O'Brien and Jean um, wrote, um, they requested for permission to dump 5,000 gallons of this toxic waste into the city of Flint sewage, um, uh, the sanitary sewage lines, right, which are right below or above the water lines and so all it takes is a, a break in the line a break in the line there's been a lot of main breaks and so that cross contaminates so on top of that on top of the MDEQ and on top of the state of Michigan approving for this racer superfund site that is owned by our federal government which was formerly owned by General Motors they approved for them to do this to dump all of this stuff and to pour it into the sanitary sewage lines which all these lines broke and they're cross contaminating into the water. Now we got this, this toxic waste site here, this corn well that they literally have six miles of piping that goes straight. It's, this is the question mark. Does that pipe, do those pipes go straight to the water plant? Or are they coming from the water plant? Those are question marks. Now I have my own suspicions, but this is all just a little bit too fishy to me. Um, I'm going to read what I wrote down because obviously if I wrote it down, it's very important. And then I will elaborate on what my thoughts are, okay? This is stuff that I had written down throughout um, the day and whatnot. Um, so once again, this is toxic waste that is uncapped and exposed to the air and to the elements and to the people. Bray Road. Um, this is that dumping property that I showed you guys about. It's connected to the treatment plant through miles of underground pipe, which is connected to that cold well site. The lagoon system has two holding areas, one to dewater the sludge and another from which they, the waste is pumped and treated by, is treated with other sewage. Okay, little is known about the contents or volume of waste at Bray Road. These are all written statements. Little is known about what is what is in the, that toxicity, that toxic dump, that waste that's at that corn, corn well that they're flushing through to or from that water plant. They don't know the contents of it. But ironically enough, Jeff Wright, he said this. Genesee County Drain Commissioner Jeff Wright, who is also the CEO of the KWA, whose office oversees the Cornwell drain, Jeff writes, he is the drain commissioner. He is also the CEO of the KWA pipeline and his office oversees the Cornwell drain. 
He said he doesn't believe that there is an unimaginable, unimaginable environmental problem with that property. He doesn't imagine, he doesn't believe that there is an unmanageable environmental problem with that problem, with that property. Um, Genesee County and the city of Flint have already signed capacity agreements committing to buy water from the KWA in the future. They had already, before the switch of the water, they had already invested millions of dollars that they did not have. They did not have this money, but they invested millions of dollars into this KWA pipe before they even made the switch of the water. The switch of the water was agreed upon before the, um, before Darnell Early, the emergency manager came in. Darnell Early was not the one who said, we're gonna switch the water. Darnell Early was stating, according to a written statement that he wrote and other documents, the MDEQ is the one who had said, according to the results that were tested from the Flint water, the Flint River, the MDEQ and the state of Michigan had said that the Flint water was okay to use. Darnell Early, not being a scientist, he went along with it. And Dane Walling, Dane Walling is the one, I'm telling you guys this right now, Dane Walling, he is the manager, he was the mayor at that time, and he's walking free right now. He's the one that wanted this switch, along with Jeff Wright. They all got their hands in each other's pockets. This is so sick, you guys. This is disgusting. This corruption is so disgusting. How many thousands of lives are, 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 are um, paying the price right now? These are people that I know and people that I love. Uh, so, okay, there you are. All right. Okay. Now also, please um, keep this in mind, okay? So that Cornwell site that I was just showing you guys, um, right across, right across the, right across the street from that is um, that energy plan where I just read from you guys this article, and they used to have an elementary school right across the street where they were burning all of this waste. So the um, the this is like a nuclear power plant, right? And Okay, so it's great. They make they make power energy off of waste, right? So they're able to burn this waste and create energy from it. But the problem is, is that they're burning lead. They're burning other really toxic fumes into the air. It's being exposed into the air, into the water. This is lead. This is stuff that people are are breathing in. And they had this right by an elementary school that this lady in 1995 was talking about. And there's actually a picture. Look at this, you guys. There's actually a picture from this 1995 article of children getting on a school bus, and right behind it is where they're doing this, right where they're burning all of this toxic waste into the air. This is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. This is on Carpenter Road, okay? This is a state facility. Um, they're the ones that fund this, okay? And so if you're wondering why I have to read this is because there's so much of it, okay? I, I've got a lot of information that's always bouncing through my brain. I gotta keep it straight. Um, one question mark that we really need to find out is because the state is the one that is, um, that is funding um, for this energy plan to be there. And so we need to find out where the funds are coming from, who they're given to, how much it is, um, because the state is involved in this. This is the state. This is Governor Snyder. This is probably even years before him as well, but Governor Snyder, um, I will say Dane Walling, um, and, you know, Jeff Wright, the KB KWA pipeline guy that, you know, this is, this is so sick, you know, what they had planned. They needed so badly, they needed so badly for that, that KWA pipeline to get into the city of Flint because this is why another thing too. So the city of Flint, Michigan had already committed themselves. They had already paid out millions of dollars into the KWA pipeline, right? But the thing is, is that they needed this contract. Recently, the state of Michigan sued the city of Flint, Michigan for not going with the, um, the Great Lakes Water Authority under that 30-year contract, remember? The KWA pipeline requires for its success, for the success, Genesee County had already um, committed to it and the city of Flint had committed to it. However, unfortunately for Jeff Wright and the KWA pipeline, unless, and the state of Michigan, because they're sick too, unless the city of Flint, Michigan signs their life over under this 30-year contract to the Great Lakes Water Authority, then the KWA pipeline for Flint, Michigan is squashed, which ultimately is still going to suck for Flint. But the problem is, is that Jeff Wright is so corrupt, Dane Walling is so corrupt, I can't believe how this man is 
and sat down so quiet in the background just watching all of this go on. And Snyder too. Snyder too. This guy knows. They all got their hands in it. It's disgusting. Um, they need this contract for the Great Lakes Water Authority, GLWA. They need that 30-year water contract to go forward in order for the city of um, Flint, Michigan to be operating under the uh, KWA pipeline. Now remember, now remember this. The water, the switch of the water, the switch of the water was all a tool. They use that as a tool. So let me just break this down for you guys. Racer Superfund site. The MDEQ and the state of Michigan approved for this Racer Superfund site to dump 5,000 gallons of toxic waste, uncleansed, unprocessed toxic waste into the city of Flint's sanitary sewage lines right before the switch of the water. Months before the switch of the water. December of 2013, they started doing this. April of 2014, they did the switch of the water. Okay? Now, Cornwell, Cornwell, this toxic site. They've got six miles of pipeline that is leading to and from the city of Flint water, the treatment plant. Also that one on Bray Road with that house and the two little bodies of water where I showed you guys that it looks like, I'm like, this doesn't, it looks man-made. Um, so they, they're really, I mean, it's multifaceted. Not only are they trying to secure the city, the KWA pipeline for going in for 30 years, but they're also making sure that it's extra poisonous. They're trying to kill these people. They're trying to poison these people by putting all of this toxic crap into their water, into their sanitary sewage system. They're poisoning them. And not only are they doing it through the water, but they're doing it through the air and they're doing it through the soil and they know about it. And how has, how has this not been exposed? How are people not talking about this? And, and I'm, I'm not entirely surprised that the city and the residents of Flint, Michigan aren't throwing a fit about this because they have so much corruption and health disasters on their hands already that I, you know, it's hard for me to keep stuff straight. I can't imagine that they could possibly find room enough to consider this now too. There's so much of it. They are being hit from every corner. The city, the state, and the MDEQ, they owe the residents of Flint, Michigan. They owe them. Their health needs to be tended to. If these people want to move out of that city, they need to compensate these people and, to, and provide them for life. For life. How many people have died? How many people have died because of this stuff? How many? That we don't even know about. Besides the Legionnaires. All the cancer rates, because remember, the hospitals are also involved in it too. It's all a cover up. Every single one of them, they falsify the documents, they falsify the health records. Nobody is told the truth. This is disgusting. I can't believe this. Oh my gosh. Okay. <sighs> These are questions that we need to know about this Cornwall site, okay? Because they talked about having it cleaned. And now I just want to, I want to go back to a picture that I had taken um, on my phone screenshot all right so this is about the cornwell site okay lime sludge disposal prior to supply of water by dwsd the city's wtp i actually don't know what those acronyms mean disposed of lime sludge from a water treatment operations at the bray road disposal site that's that house i showed you guys with that path that goes down with the two bodies of water there that look like they got something going on underneath the ground the city is working with the MDEQ to address concerns at the, Bro the Bray Road site. For this study, it has been assumed that new sludge handling and disposal provisions will be utilized. Lime residual handling and disposal facilities have an estimated project cost of $15.1 million. No costs have been included for remediation of the Bray Road site. However, they have... They have um, they have given cost and thought to how they're going to dispose of it, but not to remediate it. You want to know how they dispose of it? They dump it into the people's bodies. That's how. That's exactly how they do it. They put it into the water. They put it into the land. They put it into the air, and they, they filter it straight through to the water plant. That's how they do it. They don't talk anything about anything about um, remediation, but disposal was addressed. They, they didn't have to go into to depth about how they're going to dispose of it. It's clear enough what they've been doing. I really wonder, I really wish I could have met Matt McFarland, the man that worked for the water plant that was murdered because he was going to tell some truth and he was killed. So some of the questions that we need to ask about this Cornwall site here is when was it cleaned? When was it cleaned? How much of it was cleaned? What was in it? Because that's another thing that they said is they don't even know what the heck is in it. And they're trying to say that it looks white because it's all concrete. Who knows? It could be dumping bodies in there. Probably are. 
Why is it uncapped? Why is it exposed? Why is this, to this toxic waste exposed to the elements where people can breathe it in? People are living around this, right by this cons this energy plant where they're burning all of this stuff, right where they have all of this housing, this low-income housing, where all of these people live, where this elementary school once was. They put all this deadly stuff on purpose, right with the HUD, the HUD, um, urban development, all of that, all of the zoning stuff. They did all of this on purpose. They placed these people in places on purpose, right where it's the most dangerous for them to live so that they can dumb them down and they can kill them is exactly what I'm saying. Jeff Wright, Dane Walling, Snyder, um, and also, yeah, the emergency manager, he, he could have, he could have done some avenues but i think that um like somebody else said that he was a pawn in all of this and they're putting it all on him i even think that bill shooty the attorney general in um in michigan i think he's got some part in this too anybody else please feel free to state other names that i might be forgetting about right now um are the pipes going to or from the water plant from the cornwall plant are they going to the water plant or are they coming from the water plant Seeing as how it's upstream, I'm going to assume that it's going to the water plant. Okay. People's health and their lives have been affected. This, And by the way, this is this is just a piece of the puzzle. Okay. This is a piece of the puzzle. Sony came on the screen. Where do you think they're watching? Sony came on the screen? Um, that's right, Nigel. I went with a voice. <laughs> so help my voice be heard and share this video out. Um, that's another reason why I share this stuff with you guys while I can, so that I can get it out there to you guys while I can. Um, okay, hold on a second, hold on a second. Okay, so we need to see these financials. We need documents showing financials of how much of the state is paying the county to have this energy plant um, right across the street from this Cornwall. Because, you know, the state is funding this. The state is funding it. They're the ones that are approving it. The state of Michigan is approving this for all of this um, environmental issues, the health of the people to be affected. They know exactly what they're doing. That state of Michigan is so messed up. Mm. And you know what? All those documents that I found in the house, man, it's so crazy to see how all this is coming together. This was not by chance. This was not by accident that I just so happened to walk into to this, into these things that were, I'm telling you guys, this is laminated. I didn't laminate this stuff. I walked into an abandoned house that was at least sitting there for 15 years abandoned. And I found this stuff. Like, like it was meant for me to find it. It was not. All right. I'm just going to continue to read what I had written down. April 2014, one year before the water switch, the city of Flint had already committed and invested millions of dollars in the KW pipeline. I know I said this already, but I'm going to read it anyways. Um, they did not have the money for this deal. So these are some of the people that are... Um, very, very, very likely to be guilty, like Sue McCormick, Dane Walling, Governor Snyder, of course, in my opinion, Bill Schuette, um, possibly some people on the city council even. Um, and so the, the MDEQ, the MDEQ is the one that said that the water was safe to make the switch, but when were those tests performed? Because um, I want to know when those tests were performed on the water because... Um, they didn't start dumping all this crap into the into the water um, until a certain time frame. So it's like they did this all on purpose. You know, the pipes, once again, are just a distraction. Um, they made the water bad. They did this. They created a mess so that they could get the KWA pipeline in there. And also, because of the hatred and the disgustingness in their heart, they were also able to... Um, to kill and to make sick and to um, dumb down the residents of Flint, Michigan by poisoning them with God knows what is in the soil and in all of these dumping grounds in Flint, Michigan that they've been exposing these people to. This is very serious, you guys. This is so serious. I, um, I don't understand how people can not understand by now that this is done on purpose. The switch of the water was absolutely done on purpose. It was not an accident. They did not switch the water thinking that everything was fine. It was not about saving money at all. It was not about saving money at all. It was all a ploy to create devastation in order to get their way. That's what they wanted to do. They did exactly what they had intended to do. I bet you, though, that they didn't expect for so many people to rally around the city of Flint, Michigan, that their hand, well, we weren't going to get closer to their hand. They, they didn't expect that because the city of Flint has been so forgotten for so long. People have forgotten about these people for so long.
They didn't expect it. One time too many of these people did. One time too many these people have done to these people in Flint, Michigan. There's children that still have to live in this crap. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the MDEQ approved the permit for the switch around April 10th of 2014. The MDEQ approved for the water to be used in April 10th, 2014. And that's what Darnell Early was going off of, was um, all of the results from the scientists. And after the MDEQ looked over these results and had approved it, um, then, um, then he gave his signature. And so the switch happened on April 25th of 2014. The MDEQ approved for it April 10th, and the switch happened April 25th. All right, so one more thing here I'm gonna read. Um, this was written in, this was written in November, Friday, November 20th of 1992. Everybody, please, please, um, share this video out. This is called GM raped for sale of plant to Germans. Mm, should I read it all? It's not that long. Do you guys want me to read it? Yeah, I'm going to read it anyways. Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is General Motors, okay? It doesn't matter what state it's in. doesn't matter what city it's in. General Motors, they're here in our country. They're corrupt. They're the ones leaving all this crap everywhere. There's some sickness going on here. Um, General Motors says it will not respond to a group of Holocaust survivors who are criticizing plans to sell a Hoosier auto parts plant to, German, to a German firm. Rabbi Jacob Bronner, president of Children of the Holocaust claims the sale of General Motors Allison transmission plant in Indianapolis is a slap on the face, not only to Holocaust survivors and their families, but to the Jewish community in all of America. Allison makes high technolo technology transmission used in the Army's M1 battle tank and several other military vehicles. General Motors has announced plans to sell the division to ZF Friedrichs Schaffen AG. The sale must be approved by, by several government agencies. General Motors spokesman Charles Lacari would not comment Thursday on the moral issues Bronner raised. In a letter Wednesday to General Motors Chief Executive Officer John F. Smith Jr., Bronner noted that ZF is the very company that built Hitler's Nazi panzer tanks in World War II. He asked General Motors to scrap the sale at least until Germany shows a willingness and an ability to quell neo-Nazi violence against the Jews. Bronner's group is not the only one questioning the sale. U.S. Representative Dan Burton, R. Ind, I don't know what that stands for, contends the deal involves a security risk and has asked the Pentagon to block this transaction. Oh, my gosh. Right, Denise? Oh, wow. Wow is right. This is the first time I'm reading this, by the way. I skimmed it. I'm reading this for the first time with you guys. In a letter to defense, Secretary Richard Cheney, Burton, and nine other House members asked Cheney to stop the deal. Cheney never replied to the letter, said Burton's press secretary, said pre Burton's press secretary Mark Walker. In a statement from General Motors Detroit headquarters, Executive Vice President William E. Hogland said the products Allison makes are not classified and are not included on any of the U.S. government's critical technologies list. It's backwards, but you guys can read backwards. Here's a picture. Here's what it says. And this was in um, November 20th, 1992. What have I been saying about General Motors? What have I been saying about General Motors? Y'all still want to deny God. He led me to these papers in this house. I'm telling you guys. Look, I got these maps that I found. These aerial photographs of the city of Flint, Michigan. All right. So these all, now, you know, I've been sitting on this stuff a really long time. And it's really interesting. This is spring of 1991. It's really interesting to see how... I'm starting to understand them a lot more because I didn't at first when I first found them I didn't know what the heck they meant I didn't know I thought I didn't know what the heck they meant at all because I didn't know the history they weren't gonna make they weren't gonna they weren't gonna make sense at all to me but it's absolutely unbelievable that by by divine chance everything that I am now learning and coming to understand 
all stems back to the documents that I had found divinely in an abandoned house in Flint, Michigan. I've been accused of stealing them and breaking into houses. Shut up. Just shut up. I'm so tired of people. <laughs> I really am. Shut up. A bunch of public relations from the state of Michigan is what that is. People trying to get on me. I don't care. I really don't care. Because if I know the truth, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And God led me to this truth, and obviously he wants me to say it. So, anyways, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, there will be more, but I don't have any more at this point because I'm just trying to update you guys as I find it, as we find it, um, for the reasons, like what other people have said, if something were to happen to me, then um, at least you guys can pick up where I left off, right? So, everybody have a good night, God bless you, and God is real, Jesus is real, and um, obviously this is pretty evident, like I didn't, you know, whatever, have a good night. <laughs>